Hey Floss Tube, welcome back. How's it going? I am Brian and I am here to share with you my 44th Floss Tube video and I plan on sharing with you uh, what I've been stitching on the past week. I have had a lot of a lot of progress and I am really excited to, to share that with you. But first of all, I want to welcome you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to share with you. If you are returning to my channel, thank you for coming back. I always enjoy hearing from you and enjoy knowing that you are, are watching my channel. So it's been a great week, uh, both stitching wise and work wise. I feel like I've been able to accomplish quite a bit at work and I've had some, some good things happen there. Also, um, weather wise, it's been really nice. Uh, we are in the 80s. It's just, it's just perfect weather right now. So if you're looking for good weather, uh, this is the place to be. As I said, I've had a, had a great week and I want to thank everybody for all of the comments they've left in my last couple of videos. I just want to respond to a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody who uh, have, have expressed encouragement for me to do my videos more often. I was actually a little bit shocked that I had so many people say, yay, we, we love seeing more videos from you. So I was kind of afraid that I would wear out my welcome, but uh, maybe, maybe not right now. Also, I showed uh, last week, I talked about my Quaker Christmas 2, and I had a question about whether or not to do uh, eyelets or Smyrna crosses, and I got a whole range of opinions, which is kind of what I expected. Um, the, the, the suggestion that I got that I really like uh, was from Brenda, uh, that's Handwork Maniac. Uh, she, she suggested just leaving that one little set of eyelets uh, it, just to make it kind of uh, a little bit different than anybody, anything else. And I kind of like that because that piece is meant to be looked at to try to re try to find all of the Christmas carols that are in it. And so that would be something else to look for is the place where uh, those stitches are a little bit different than anybody else. I also had a few people suggest doing different specialty stitches, uh, specialty stitches that fit in a two by two block of stitches. And that's, a, that's actually a pretty good idea too. I hadn't considered that because I'm not really that much of a specialty stitch guru. So I think I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of searching and see if I can find any stitches that will fit into that two by two block. I think that'd be kind of cool to have something a little bit different in different places. Uh, a couple of suggestions that I had were scotch stitch, um, and road stitch, I guess that would be a square road stitch. So yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll think about doing that. Um, I think that would kind of be kind of be cool too. So uh, another question. Thank you for all of your suggestions about scissors. I got even more suggestion suggestions about good scissors to use, and I'm actually going to need to have a good pair of scissors for Hardanger. Uh, sooner rather than later because uh, one of my pieces uh, re is going to require some cut work and I'll talk about that in a little bit later. Also, I had a question about what kind of frame that I use and it's been a while since I've talked about that so if you're new to my channel you probably haven't seen that. I use an Omanic quantum frame. I actually have two. I have at the time, the, lo the widest, the widest uh, stretcher bars that they made, I think they now do even wider bars. I have like the 90 centimeter and maybe the 70 centimeter, either the 70 or the 80 centimeter. Um, I have either the 70 or the 80 centimeter stretcher bars. And then I have two, I have two different sizes of the of the sidebars as well. I have their smaller size and then their middle size. And I, I kind of interchange them as I go depending on, on what I want. You know, of course, depending on the size of the project that I'm stitching and also 
uh, depending on whether I want more or less area exposed. So I have found that it's nice to have a little bit more wider scroll bar than, than the project that, you're, that I'm working on. Uh, a lot of my projects will fit on my narrower bars just barely, but what happens is the ed edges of the fabric get really close to the wider part of the bar and it makes it so that I can't tighten up the middle very well. So I, I like having a little bit of margin on either end of, of the fabric so that I can get a good, I get better tension that way. I really like, I really like my, my scroll frame. I like it because I can easily switch projects in and out. I don't have to deal with uh, stitching material to the frame or or having to deal with Velcro and, and, or anything like that. It's really easy to switch things in and out. I also use a stand. I use a stand that I made out of PVC and I, if I can find it, I'll put a, I'll put a link to uh, the video where I, where I show how that works as well. I really like my, I really like my stand. It was cheap to make and it is nice and adjustable and it, and it works for me. And, and does what it what what it needs to do. So th that's all the comments that I had, and I think uh, we are close to the end of the month. Today is the thirtieth, and I haven't stitched today yet, but I think I'm going to show you a couple of graphs to kind of show you what how I'm doing for this month, and then next week we'll we'll look at kind of like the big picture to close out the month. So first of all, I'm going to show you my stitch trend. And you'll see that as compared to February, it, things are looking a lot better. I have, I have even more stitches and the piece that I am going to be working on for the next two days is going to add, oh, maybe a couple thousand more stitches to this. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, part of the reason why, why I'm getting more stitches this month is I've worked on uh, Quaker Christmas 2 for almost two weeks and that adds a lot of stitches because there's a lot of negative space in it. The next graph that I'm going to show you is my Pareto showing the number of pages that I've stitched and this is kind of interesting. I have, sti I have finished a page on all of the projects that I've worked on so far this month. Uh, this is, doesn't mean that I've stitched an entire page on each of these projects. It's just kind of the way things have worked out. So basically this says, I finished this page. So I may have been working on some of these pages for a while, but, um, but yeah, so that's kind of interesting, a page on each project. And then finally, I'll show you this graph. This is my cumulative stitch trend. So it's showing how the number of stitches that I stitch increases over the course of the year. And you can see that uh, my, I think it's the green line, the line that's incomplete, that shows me where I am as compared to previous years. And the, the bottom line is last year, you can see that, um, that, that last year my line had a lot uh, gentler slope to it. And then the top line is the is the year before 2017 and you can see that line has quite a bit of slope to it. I am kind of close to that, not not completely close, but um, so I'm on track right now to to get a good number of stitches in this year. Uh, I'm not trying to beat anything, I just like keeping track of that just for information purposes. So those are the graphs that I have to show you. Also, uh, I also want to share with you another project that I would like to start. Uh, I guess this is, this is a chart that I would like to start sooner rather than later. So another one, and the chart that I thought I'd share with you today is this chart. Um, this is called the uh, Red House Sampler, I believe. Yeah, the Red House Sampler by Brenda Keys of the Sampler Company. I really like this chart. Um, I like this sampler a lot. I really like the border around the edge of the sampler. And of course it has a red house. So yeah, I like, I like houses and samplers. 
So uh, this, this chart, I ordered it directly from Brenda on her website. Uh, she's in the UK and it, it arrived in a couple of weeks. It took a couple of weeks to get here. Um, and I was actually kind of impressed. I'll show you a couple of things about this chart that's, that, that, that are kind of interesting that I didn't expect. Uh, she has a whole, um, a whole blurb. This is with all of her charts, I think, uh, talking about the symbolism of sampler motifs and uh, being very, very British. This is titled, How to Ensure a Confident Start and a Perfect Finish. That just strikes me as a very British way of expressing things. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is, this is in here. And then she has, she also sent, this is kind of interesting. Uh, it comes with a sleeve that you can use to put your chart in while you're stitching at it to kind of protect it so that it doesn't get all worn. And I think, yeah, another thing that came with the chart is this is a sticker that you can stick on the back of your framed piece. I thought that was, so there's lots of little, little goodies that came in with this chart. But like I say, I really like, I really like this sampler. I, I like the colors in it and I like the border around, around it and, and the house. So this is something that I think I want to stitch sooner rather than later. This is, this is high on my list of things to start. So uh, when I get around to, I would really like to start that. I don't even have fabric or floss for it, but that is, that is, a, that is a chart that I would really like to start. Okay. So, let's get to why you're all here. <laughs> I have been working on, I have the wrong chart, just a sec. Okay. So, I have been working on this week English Garden Sampler. This is a design by Teresa Wensler. Um, it is... It is basically an English garden scene with an elf alphabet and then you have this this little hedge down here below and then there's uh, roman numerals for the numbers down here nice border and there's two peacocks here there's one peacock here and another peacock here um and i'll show you where i was the last time that i that i showed you this um let's see i am stitching this on 28 count antique white Lugana. I am stitching using Sullivan's floss and I have I have expressed uh, a little bit of distaste for the floss that I'm using. Uh, that still holds a little bit. Um, the previous time I worked on this I, I expressed a little bit of frustration with it and I was kind of expecting to have a little bit of frustration but um, I haven't. I've really enjoyed working on it this time. So, um, yeah. So, I'll show you how much I've accomplished and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. So, let's see. I'm going to... So, this is what it looks like now. Let me pull back a little bit so that you can see the entire piece. Yeah, I stitched the border first and then I've been working on this. Uh, the border is not done. There's a whole bunch of specialty stitches that go all the way through here. So that's good. But those, I'm saving those for last. So I'll give you a little bit closer look of the, of the scene that I just finished. So I have stitched about this strip right through here. I was able to stitch three diagonals, actually, and start a fourth. And now... Uh, you can see I've hit more of this more of this border down here. This peacock is completely stitched. Well, all of the regular stitching of this peacock is is stitched. There's a lot of holes in here because there are beads in, her ta in the peacock's tail. There are beads in his tail, and there's also blend. There's also some floss blends with blending filament in his tail and also in his body. Um, the way that I stitch with blending filament, I, I knot my blending filament to my needle with a lark's head knot 
just so that it doesn't slip around. And because of that, that makes it kind of hard to park. So I saved that till the end. So when I finish this down here, I'm gonna come back in and, and do all of the blending filament just to, just to get that finished. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really happy. Actually, there's this diagonal and another diagonal and a corner left to stitch. So I am, I am really close to finishing this top scene. I didn't expect to be able to finish the top scene, but I didn't expect, I also didn't expect to, to get so far. So I am really, I am really happy with my progress and I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Um, this, this peacock, part of the reason why I think I enjoyed this so much is I got some different colors besides, besides the greens in the background. And there are some beautiful blues. You're not gonna be able to see them because there's not very many stitches of them, but there's some beautiful blues and some beautiful greens and, and blue-green blends in here that I just, ah, uh, I just really love those colors. In fact, I, I love those colors so much that, and I never really wanted to do this, but it made me want to um, get her, Teresa's peacock tapestry and, and stitch that just because I want to, I want to, I want to explore these colors more. That design it has a reputation. It has a reputation of being one of her more difficult peat designs, and it and I think the border is very intricate. There are tons of there are tons of colors in the border, and then there's all these little teeny tiny leaves that are just spread throughout, and of course everything is backstitched. So that would be a lot of work. But working on this peacock makes me want to stitch a bigger peacock and I think her peacock is one of the her peacock in peacock tapestry is one of the most beautiful peacocks I've seen stitched so yeah that makes me want to do that so yeah I'm really happy with this so the next time I work on this I'm going to finish this up uh, stitch the blending filament there is a block of stitches here it's surrounded by cross stitch and then there's specialty stitches in the middle. So I'll stitch the, the frame around that and then see how much of the alphabet and there's like two topiary trees on either side. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with what I've been able to, to accomplish and I'm actually looking forward to being able to stitch on this sometime. Not right now. Um, Working on it last night, I decided that, yeah, it's time for a little bit of a break, but I am a lot in a lot better mood than I was last time I finished up with that. So I thought that I would show you how I manage my floss for English Garden Sampler. Uh, Teresa Wensler is famous for all of the blended threads that she uses, and it takes a little bit to figure out how to deal with that, uh, mostly because you end up stitching a little bit of one color and then having to end off and save it for later. So um, I'll show you what I do. But uh, I use bobbins, so here's my box that I, that I have. I put a label on the front. This says, so that I know that this box is for English Garden Sampler. Um, I have, these are all of my flosses. There's some beads down here. Um, this is the blending filament that I'm going to be using. This is called Peacock, actually. It's a 085, Krennic 085. This, I'm kind of excited to use this because of the, like there's two or three different colors in there, so that'll be fun. So you'll notice I have a bunch of empty bobbins and I have a whole bunch of these little bobbins over here. Uh, when I start working on a blend, um, and I finish working on it and I have, and I have floss left over. I pull out one of my empty bobbins. I put the symbol that is, that is used for this, for this color. And then I put the excess thread on this. 
And um, so yeah, so I have, I have a whole scad of, of bobbins that have blends on them. And then when I, when I have to pull out, when I see a new blend, a new symbol in my chart, I basically have to, I basically go through all these, all these bobbins to, and see if I have already got uh, that, that color on a, on a bobbin. And I basically just do a length at a time. I just blend a length at a time because quite frankly, I, I suspect that there are some blends that aren't used very much. I suspect that the blends for the, the Peacock's body, there's not very many. I don't even think there's a length's worth of, of blends for that. So there's that. And the other thing, I got this chip, I got this idea from Stitch and Mommy, I think. Because it's blends, you want to have all of your floss be the same length so you don't waste floss because you might have a little length that's a little bit longer than the other. And I used to, I used to pull out two lengths and kind of do the length that I like and then, and then kind of eye it and match those, but I get mismatches every once in a while. So um, I have a six inch ruler and when I cut a new length of floss, um, I basically just wrap the floss around the ruler twice. That gives me a two foot length of floss, which is a pretty good, um, pr pr a, a pretty good length for, for how I like to stitch. And then all of my, all my floss is the same length, so I don't have to worry about making sure that all my, about, about, um, any mismatches in length. So for the colors that aren't blended, two feet is a little bit short for me. So I've been just doing two strands and using the pin stitch to start rather, I, I generally like to use the loop start, uh, but for this, because of the way I'm doing this with the blends, I, I've been using the pin stitch to start with two lengths, even if, if it's the same color of floss. So that's what I am doing to deal with all of the blends. And since I started doing that with, with making the floss all about the same length, that's really helped. That's really made things a lot easier. So that's what I've worked on. Uh, this next week, I'm pulling out the next piece in my rotation. And this is another piece that I'm really excited for. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be working on the Modern Folk Embroidery uh, Four Seasons, A Primitive Quaker Year. This was the, the 2018 Mystery Stitch Along that, that he did. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be pulling this out and working on it again. So this is what it looks like right now. I don't have a good picture of what this looks like. I don't have a good picture of what this will look like when it's finished. But as you can see, I've stitched half of winter and half of spring. And right now I'm working over here on winter. So my plans are to, there's a bunch of little motifs that come around here. My plans are to stitch those, uh, stitch the, finish the border around the entire winter thing. And then maybe do this. Uh, there's like a triangle motif here. And there's a diamond motif here. Maybe stitch those two motifs. That's kind of what I think I'll be able... Well, I think that's a little bit ambitious. But that's kind of what I'm thinking about... How I'm thinking about working through here. Is um, basically work on finishing this entire winter block. I think I can do that. And then how, however much of the motifs on either side, those will just be bonus. So yeah, I want to get all of winter finished. So I am excited about working on this. It's been, it's been a while. It's been about a month and, well, it's been over a month. And I'm excited to work on this again. Uh, this fabric is, um, 35 count classic homespun by r and r the floss is PR 75 from silks for you and yeah 
So I'm excited to be working on this some more. So that's all that I have to share with you today. Um, I hope that you have a great week. As always, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And uh, feel free to comment or like this video as well. Uh, as always, you can follow my daily progress on Instagram. I am at Blitzstitch on Instagram and will be posting uh, daily progress to show you how I am working, how, I'm, how things are coming with my uh, Four Seasons piece. At any rate, I hope that you have a great week and we will talk to you later. Goodbye. These are all of my colors for here. And I also have, this is the blending filament that will be used. So I thought that I would, we'll wait for the clock to die down.